this, things had started becoming difficult from much earlier on. In the course of the night, we had um, um, I deployed 50 motorcycles, which were to escort the voting material from the EC stores to the polling stations. Um, just about 11 at night, police picked them up and carried them to the police station. So that was the, the beginning of the um, difficulties. Then uh, later that night, also had some polling agents in the Chairman Town Council who were uh, um, assaulted, and many of them had um, run away. So by the time we reached that point in the day and where we had um, brazen ballot stuffing, I think I'd reached the point where the um, nerves were frayed, angers were uh, boiling, and um, it is possibly unfortunate for Dr. Tango Doi because he's the one, the first NRM official to arrive at the scene where the actual staffing had taken place. But was he complicity in ballot staffing? No, the, the organization. There was an issue which came about as to who, who could be staffing. And it was only one party which could be staffing. So the arrival of Tango Doi at the time when matters were already heated, I think it's like walking into a crossfire where um, already guns were blazing as far as the rigging was concerned. But again, for starters, how did you pull off this election, a rare win? Um, we had a very good team. Um, for, for the UPC, we had a great team. We had um, members of parliament, district chairpersons, and councillors. And we tried to structure our message in that we were bringing out the strength of our candidate rather than dwelling on um, other candidates, especially the NRM candidate or the circumstances under which um, we ended up in that by-election. So I think our messaging was correct. The level of support on the ground was also wonderful. And um, most of all, we had a great candidate to be able to front in this election. Uh, w could you explain the irony of UPC winning a party with whom they are allied or they are in bed? You see, that is where you and many people get it wrong in that every election I've contested, NRM have fielded a candidate, and that goes for all of my members. There is nothing which has been put in place where we don't field against each other. And where I have a UPC candidate, I'll do everything in my power to see the UPC candidate goes through. <coughs> so it's just, um, I think, a great misconception that there should not be, or um, where NRM is fielding, we don't field, or where we are fielding, NRM does not field. That is not true. All the elections I've contested, NRM have fielded. All, the, all my members of parliament have contested against NRM candidates. All our district chairpersons have contested against NRM candidates. So um, it's the nature of the game. To what extent does this election expose or reveal the kind of relationship UPC has with NRM? I think what, what this election brings out is that um, from our side, these malpractices, and I'm glad that the president has talked about it, has written about it, it should not be tolerated. And as far as UPC is concerned, we are not going to tolerate that sort of practices which took place, um, with some of what we saw in Oyam, but also um, which has come out very highly in Bukedia. Because uh, you mentioned earlier that about 36, 36 point something percent turned out, and that is normal for by-election. That is the, uh, roughly what you expect in a by-election. It is the bouquet of 87%, which is a total abnormality. You know, it, it doesn't happen. By-election, and especially for local government, that is a complete impossibility. Well, thank you very much. I'll bring in uh, Dr. Tango Doi. Doctor, you were in the thick of things, very central in this election, like several other by-elections. And you came out to say that there was stuff from the NRM secretariat who participated or who could have participated in ballot staffing? Could you confirm this? Uh, first of all, good evening viewers and uh, good evening fellow panelists. I think I want to start from uh, a very light note that uh, I want to appreciate the starting point of Honorable Jim McKenna that uh, Tango Doi reached when maybe the power keg was full. <laughs> and it was you landed in a crossfire. A spark. <laughs> in the world war 
if you reach World War One, the murder at Sarajevo was just <coughs> not anything big, but because the power keg was full, so the war started to the extent that at the end, if you ask them why did you start the war, they will have many questions and many answers. The allocations I had with him was unfortunate because the first thing I did as an elder was to visit him at home, to pay a courtesy call on him. And I think we humbly said and agreed that this is not a do or die. And in any case, if there's anything, we must really sort out without having a big, big mess out of it. My uncle. You reached out to him? Yes, I did. When in the background you're already preparing some Well, mischief. those are your words, and I can't deny you your words because you're a Muganda, I'm a Jap. We define how we conceive things. Okay. Proceed. I went to him, and I went to him as a person I respect. And irrespective of what happened, I still respect him. And I think, to me, all was good. Oyam was okay. There was nothing really to think there was a big election in Oyam. Even when we traversed the constituency, we didn't have anywhere where we conflicted or clashed like it would have been if it was an, a noop-dominated area. Did you ever smell a defeat? Uh, so when we went on with the elections, mm. I think, like uh, he has said, there were things which did not happen right. And uh, in my interview with NBS, I actually say it is alleged that there are some staff of the LRM Electoral Commission, I mean some staff of the Secretariat, who are involved in this scam. And the one that those staff investigated or that issue investigated, good enough I wrote to the Secretary General, and the Secretary General has actually taken on to investigate a few things here and there. So once the investigation is done, he will release and if we find that there was staff from the Secretariat who are not supposed to be in the field involved, I think he has the right as the overall person to take action. So yes, I said, and I said I will not relent until it is brought down to record. But don't you feel a little ashamed that in every by-election the name Tango Doi pops, not for good reasons? I think the first thing you must know is what is a by-election. A by-election is a focus of the whole country on a small constituency. To the extent that whatever is done, whatever is done rightly or wrongly, will actually come out. Now, the name Tango Doi, I'm actually not afraid because in the heart of things, I know I'm, I'm not so terrible like you portray me whenever I come here. No, I don't. <laughs> This is not the first time we are discussing this thing. No, we are discussing Oyam. And in Oyam, we have discussed by you elections are here. widely implicated in the fraud. You know, I always want moderators who guide us, not moderators who dig into emotions, so that the public should actually have a, have a feel of what happened. I can tell you, I deal with the end tale of electoral process, which is vote protection. The end tail is the most difficult time to manage. There's a secretary general has reorganized the secretary such that there's a team that goes for research, a team goes for mobilization, another team goes for the end tail. The vote protection, training agents and doing all that. That is the most difficult time. Because that's when all the focus of all the all home are actually on you or on the place. So at times when you hear the Honorable Kenna is saying it, and nice, and I liked it, that Tanga, I think, reached at a point when he had really been tampered with, his motorcycles had been confiscated, this had not been done well, actually reached at the, the zenith point where I said, maybe I was a spark factor. And of course, with today's uh, media, you can't hide away. So when the media was awash with Tango Doi, it's not for the reason that I'm a thief, as I was called have a track record of not even appearing in a police book for any offense. So I think... Yeah, but you, you, well, you have that track record, but the reality speaks differently. I was born some, some years ago. I'm actually after 55 years. So when you talk of my track record, yet you have seen me for three years, I really wonder what trajectory you're dealing with. What historical trajectory are you dealing with?
You know, let us use words. We should not portray a person in the media for the whole world in the negative. Now, the big question remains, why Tanga Odoi? Why not All the Tanga time. Odoi? Why not Tanga Odoi? I deal with the entail of a very tense process. So does it suggest that the entail involves floods, fraud, and irregularities? It does not mean so. It means it is the most tense time of a process. And the most tense time invites a lot of synergies. Well, not that they're in convergence, proper convergence, but they're in conflict in that convergence. Well, thank you very much. Honorable Segona, what's your reading of the Oyam by-election? And the sentiments of the president. The president came out and called for a reprimand of whoever was involved in any kind of irregularities. And that was the second letter he was writing in a space of seven days. Um, the first reaction was to the elections in Bukedea. Now he also commented on the Oyama election. Well, um, I'm glad to hear these two gentlemen saying they have made peace because um, the last I saw them publicly, one was accusing the other of being stupid <laughs> and the other one was a thief. No, I no. didn't accuse him of being a thief. I no, you said he's stupid. You're a loser. You, you said he's a loser. You said he's stupid. We, we could play it back for you. Yeah, you can. He said you were a thief and until a few microseconds ago, that's how I understood both of you to be, because you seem to know each other. Yes, we do. And uh, when you tell me about somebody you know, and he tells me about somebody he knows, me who has seen you for a few years, I tend to believe. That said, I want to congratulate this young lady, not because she won, mm. but she was, because she was declared. And I know that being declared first in a by-election in Uganda today, especially when you are not on the NRM ticket, is big victory. That is not to say I'm not aware that uh, they are one and the same, because they have an alliance whose terms we have never come to understand. Is it an alliance or a cooperation? Well, it depends on what you think it is, because cooperating, as long as they have not displayed the terms, permit me to deduce from what I see and make conclusions. Uh, well, of course, Pro Professor Tanga said recently, right now that uh, it would have been different if it was a noob-dominated area. In other words, what we have seen are just symptoms of what they, can, they are capable of doing. So because it was sister brother, it could not be worse than that. The other reason why I congratulate this lady is because to me, I am meant to understand she's wife to my son, a Bill, Honorable Bill, who was recently shortchanged in, by, Yala. in Yala by the same NRM. And you know he's Secretary General of UPC. So but he was uh, shortchanged and betrayed by the same party he signed a memorandum with. At least I'm very sure as a Secretary General, his signature must be on that document, which I have never seen. And of course, a bill is my friend. So to me, it could have been consolation from the people of Yam. Of course, we cannot forget that we the by-election arises out of a sad note of losing one of our own, uh, Honorable Ngola Makadogo. Now, when you go to the quality, not simple of by-elections, but elections in Uganda. One, I have stated here before that Uganda's electoral history has been chaotic from 1980 and all subsequent elections. And the common denominator in all post-independence elections in Uganda has been a one Joel Kaguta Museveni plus that other name. He's the common denominator. If Obote was responsible for the problems of 1980, 
at least he has, he has not been around from 96 to date. Seven has come out to say he's the master of violence. And in all elections we have seen violence, at least for as long as I've been an adult, and he has been a participant. Now, Jimmy, Honorable Jim Akena tells you that even the people he had mobilized and organized peacefully to go and protect the vote were rounded up by police. Why is it that in every election, no NRM is arrested? Is it that uh, the NRMs are law-abiding and the rest of us are chaotic? In every election. Number two, you mentioned the turn-up of 36%. But just, you simply just... It was actually 36.10%. Just oppose that against the allegations or the statements of ballot staffing. So even this so-called 36 you're talking about, is you, you have not considered, you have not computed the ballot staffing. And all manner of electoral indiscipline that took place. So it could have been less? It, it not could have been. It was less. The legitimate bona fide voter turn up out was much less than this. Do you agree with this stance? I don't care. Wait, J wait. Just a second, uh, uh, Jimmy. Do you think the turnout could have been less than what was projected? Most likely, yes. Okay. Yes. Now, Tang agrees that his officials from the NRM Secretariat, and who we have always accused of causing chaos in the field, without, even, without his knowledge, went to Oyam and messed up the process before he even got there. And this is consistent with what we have all said. Now, the other suspect in electoral fraud, Joel Mseveni, has now written to say, I have been informed, I'm aware that there was this, there was this, and this, and that. If you go to Bukedia, the people that have been arrested include the DPC, RDC, OCCID. We are waiting to see who is going to be arrested in respect of Oyam. Shockingly, Museven is concerned about these two. How about those where his forces, his mercenaries, wearing UPDF uniforms and police, have been killing Ugandans? How many people died in Oyam? How many people died in Bukedea? Compare them with those that died in 2021, 20, when he ordered the forces to kill Ugandans. And now he comes out to say, oh, 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 I'm so deeply concerned about the election violence, the theft. I mean, I, I think Ugandans are more intelligent than that. Now, when you say, I, I wanted, I liked the statement by Professor Tanga that, no, I'm not so terrible like you're portraying me. It's an admission that, yes, I could be terrible because I've been uh, involved in a few <laughs> cases, but not to the, to the extent. But there should not be any extent of violence, criminality, and character of that nature. Finally, well, yes. vote protection. Tanga says he deployed and he comes in at the tail end of vote protection. By the way, in modern democracies, I wonder I was, uh, I was, I observed an election in the UK. And I met a friend of mine who is a Ugandan who was standing for a local council uh, position in the same election. So the man took us out after voting. And we told him, man, you're here and they are voting for you. Who is going to protect your vote? And the man asked, guys, am I government? What business do I have with vote protection? Actually, the concept of vote protection by candidates and parties is a vote of no confidence in the national electoral system. If we trusted the electoral uh, commission, if we trusted the police, if the army was not partisan and was not getting involved on political lines, we would not have problems, we would not have issues going to the, uh, to, to the polling station, appoint expensive polling agents, in, you know, to go and protect a vote, which is not our responsibility. Mine is to get nominated 
fulfill the requirements, canvass for votes, and once I look for votes, I should not be pleading with anyone. Well, thank you very much, Honorable Segona. Honorable Miria, the president spoke even before the Oyam North by election. He wrote a missive and actually ordered for the arrest and the prosecution of whoever was involved in the mess in Bukedea. Did it in a way trigger more appetite for whoever was involved in the Oyam to carry on with their mess? What do you read in the president's sentiment about elections and the outcome of Oyam? <laughs> Me, I just laugh. These days, whenever I hear a president speak or write, I just laugh. I just laugh. What is laughable? I mean, whatever it is. <laughs> I, just, I just read and say, sure. Anyway, I'm coming to that. I want to thank you for inviting me today because I'm, I'm so glad that I have an opportunity to comment on those two reactions of President Museven because they really made me laugh. I say, this man, I don't know. Anyway, I want to thank these people. To congratulate that lady who won. To me, it was a miracle. You know, in, in God's ways, there are miracles which happen. So for me, it was a miracle that that lady won, the UPC lady, against the, the, the NRM candidate. Because it was not expected. Why? Because for me, as far as I'm concerned, talking about elections in Uganda, hmm, it's just there are no elections in Uganda. In Uganda, it is raging and wholesale voter purchase. I usually tell you that um, uh, even looking here, I'm the oldest guy, person among you, so among the, the debaters here. And I'm one who practically lived and saw what <coughs> was going on prior to NRM coming to power. And I know when I was UPM, I joined UPM of President Museveni. Candidate, he was not now president. And he is so clearly sure if this raging comes again here, I will go to the bush. And so, one major reason why Seven went to the bush to fight, mobilizing all our brothers. For us, we lost so many people in that bush war to fight and ensure that Uganda will be run in a democratic manner where there were free and fair elections in this country. And because many of us were really tired of what was going on, if you know what was going on, but I think what was going on that time, it was, yes, reading, staffing, but I think purchase was not there. I'm not so sure that there was voter purchase. I am an experienced I'm on a candidate which experienced wholesale voter patches in these last elections because I contested for to represent the elderly. I was seeing the elderly people being tortured on TV, suffering, being chased out of their land. The children are beating the old women. And I was saying, but surely, who can talk for these elderly people? And as if God was hearing me, the next time I heard that, they are going to have representatives of the elderly in parliament. And I said, one woman representing the whole country. I said, which woman is that? It must be me. I fight for people. I'm going to fight for the elderly people. <laughs> and I offered myself as a candidate. I can assure you, if you see, I watched. I said, I said God wanted me to see so that when I come on TV, I speak from practical experience. I saw this horror, horror sale, not the retail, <laughs> purchase. And I can assure you, Tango Do is here. 
I don't think that your candidate or your person who won, who is supposed to have beaten Matembi in elections. Me, I said, yes, she beat me in voter purchase, but not elections, because I can't buy voters. If you ever hear her speak, or if you even know the name of that person who is supposed to have defeated Matembe, whom you know. But I saw them buying, and I'm sure this one was one of the people that was releasing <laughs> funds, billions, millions oh, of money to buy. You, you know this honorable Babu? Hmm. Billions, that oh, one yeah. we are seeing, they were buying, they put them in a room, one, how many, 1.5 million, uh, was it 1.5 times whatever number of, of voters. So in Uganda, honestly, and I'm speaking, the good thing I love is that when I speak, I'm the voice of so many Ugandans hearing here, and I'm sure they are saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. Elections, <laughs> if we had authority, there would be no more elections <coughs> in Uganda. Because they really spend a lot of money. So you want to suggest or, that uh, uh, elections are a mockery? In my mouth. Of course they are nothing. They are a sham. And I, Miriam Matembe, who joined the seven in UPM, and then we came in NRM, and then I traversed the whole country making a constitution, trying to make Uganda a democratic country. If there is anybody who hurts, people say about that woman, she hates me. She said, no, I, I cry for my country, Uganda. I cry for my brothers who died in the bush, cousins and all those people fighting to put Uganda on the right direction. But you see what goes on all the time. Now I want <coughs> to make a comment on his statement, on the, the statements he made. You know, when I read the first letter which he wrote, is it Bukedia? For Bukedia. Hey, and I want to know, are we really going to be like in 1980? I said, oh, it was so amazing. I said, so, shares have fallen off. Museveni's eyes, has he now woken up to know that all along we have been back into 1980? Has he just realized it now? That's what I saw him in his letter. I said, but this man is amazing. He thinks we are stupid, but Ugandans are not stupid. And then he picks also on this one. Mm. I want to agree 100% with the Honorable Segona. The 2021 elections, not even before then, ever since, let me tell you, violence in elections in governments, in Museveni's government, when I, I saw it very clearly, 20, 2001, when Besige, mm. when President Besige, I mean, <laughs> you are right. When Besige decided, <laughs> President of FD. when Besige decided to part ways mm. with Museveni and went as a candidate, eh? I was there, I was a minister for ethics and integrity. I was there, oh my goodness. That is the time when I saw her. Uh, uh, this NRIM, no more for me. I'm telling you. Well, because I saw people being beaten, I saw people, <clears throat> I personally went to remove, to get people out of prison. I saw, so from that time, violence, raging, voter purchase in Uganda here, they should not be holding elections. For well, us. thank you very much. Um, Honorable Hamson Obua, the government chief whip and uh, member of parliament for Ajuri County. How is your NRM side, the yellow camp, contending with this loss of a constituency that was your stronghold? Uh, first and foremost, I wish to salute the people of Yam North on a number of fronts. Because under the stewardship of the Secretary General of NRM, I equally participated in campaigning for the candidate of uh, the National Resistance Movement. And I want to state from the onset that uh, in the 13, 14 days that we were on the campaign trail, we had a largely a very, very peaceful process across board. 
And four political parties, I would say major political parties, participated. The NRM, UPC, NUP, and FDC. And the people of Yam had the capacity of receiving the party presidents of all the four political parties. NRM, definitely, it is a minus one. From 337, it is minus one. Now we are in 336. But also I want to state that when you look at the results, as they were declared, it tells you that this was a neck-to-neck -neck competition, especially between the NRM and UPC. But when remember there was ballot stuffing. I, I, I am yet, you know... Well until, evidenced, on record. Pardon? Well evidenced. You saw the, vi the, the, the viral videos making rounds. In that video, I am yet to see the alleged faces of the Ugandans who participated in that act. Because I could only see my big brother, Honorable Jim Akena, and the chairman of the Electoral Commission of NRM. Where are these perpetrators? Who are they? This is a question we must ask. Where are they and who are they? Which side were they coming from? Because even as the NRM, who I think we are now a victim, because the victor is UPC, with a margin of 557 votes, 47% uh, versus 49. We are all asking this question, because we also believe that as NRM, we conducted a very, very peaceful process. It is until the eve of the election, and on the election day, that even us on the side of the NRM, we started witnessing from the opponent's camp what I would call uncoordinated movement of troops. And I am happy my big brother, Honorable Jimmy, is now confessing. The first was the number of motorcycle riders that jammed Oyam at night. I am happy, he says, those are people he had mobilized. Where they were mobilized from is a question for another day. But the issue is, yes, they were intercepted by police. So there were strangers in the area? Absolutely. They were intercepted by police. <coughs> they were profiled. And this record is with police. But he says these were his mobilizers. That is why I'm saying I am happy that he has conceded. But also answering your question majority, I would say 99.9% were strangers who came. So that is the first uncoordinated movement of troops on the eve. But the process was purely very, very peaceful. The people of Oyam, very, very peaceful. So is this an election you can write home about as a peaceful election? Hmm. I would, by S far. Seriously? Especially better. the campaign trail. Very peaceful. Honorable yeah, Jimmy is here. It is on the eve and the election day. But the campaign trail, there was completely like no clashes between uh, supporters of NRM and UPC and NUP. Completely not at all. So it is. So, so what's your take on the spotlight um, on NRM as being the lead perpetrator in ballot staffing? Let me tell you that um, even ask, that is a million dollar question to us. And let me tell you, if the Oyam North by-election is reflective of what transpired in 1980, I now understand why President Museveni decided to move to the bush. We can be here crying more than the bereaved, but deep inside we know the truth. We know the truth. We know the truth. We are crying. I am a victor crying. So what, the what is the truth? Is crying. What is the truth then? The, the, thing I no, the truth the is mm. <laughs> the coming in of strangers <laughs> but who, who were intercepted. Who were intercepted. You, you'll come in, Honorable Buckingham. But let me tell you, many more came from other directions. Absolutely. 
Strangers were organized or mobilized from Lira. Well, this Some reportedly came from Omoro. Others came from nearby constituencies. These people who were intercepted by police, police profiled them. Their records are there, I think from even their national IDs indicating their villages, their parishes, and constituencies where they were coming from. If you could, if you could just entertain. Yes. Does this man Tango Doi reside in Oyam? And is it criminal for somebody to come from Kampala? The, the government chief we preside in Oyam. Do you reside no, in Oyam? Not at all. No, we, we are putting we, we it are. out of context. What he's saying mm. is different. He says a hundred plus people coming at night. Tango Doi came at day to go. Uh, uh, Honorable Kenna, you want to come in? I, I want to come in very clearly because this is there were 25 drones hired by NRM from Lira. Mm. I know that... Do you have the there. record? They, they have two pictures. They were being headed by Peace, who is officially security officer at Lira University. But this is the same person who shot at Maxwell in the 2021 elections. The, these drones were moving. The motorcycles were there. I was with the DPC. I showed them at the petrol station next to the home of the former mayor of Yam Town Council, which was our base of operation, where motorcycles were parked. I made it clear. I brought 50 motorcycles from Lira to escort the voting material from the EC stores to the polling station. There are 49, 46 parishes in Oyam. Electoral Commission was using pickups from all over the country. They were labeled. You will see Kole, Chotera, all these various places. Police had vehicles from everywhere. <coughs> NRM had vehicles from everywhere. Now, my 50 motorcycles are picked up. That whole night, I'm meeting these drones moving. And I know them because these are people from Lira. So where the government chief whip is now trying to portray that, the, the, these strangers, I, I told the police I hired 50 motorcycles. I had a record. 50 motorcycles to escort 46 oh, pickups. <laughs> 46 pickups. No, we had the local ones. You the local ones, 100 motorcycles. The so local like ones were parked. In fact, the ones from Omoro were there. Are there are thousand. Let me ask. I'm allowed. The, the law allows you to deploy agents, supervisors, and even allows you to escort electro materials from the electro commission. Whatever the time. What time do, do you do that? Wait, wait, 11, 11, 11, 12. See, you are disrupting the peace. Tanga, you have never been in an election. Why? I mean, you have never been a candidate. I can't be. Electro materials. I, I don't need to be a candidate to know what happens. Now listen, electro materials are dispatched from five o'clock. But I, man, that's what I monitor that. Exactly. Yes. Yes. The man I to to follow four. them. We don't have oh, to oh, do that. Yes. In the morning. Wind up. You could wind up. Yes. The EC told us they're opening their stores at four in the morning. I witnessed it. Now that's where the motorcycles were to escort. So they pick up these motorcycles. The staffing normally and. We, we put in this so who commanded the staffing? Staffing normally occurs at the opening of polling stations, at the beginning. Did Before it happen? people have come. It happens. That's why we put Because he's used guards. to doing it. He knows the time. <laughs> he's used to doing it. So he's telling you the How truth. do I deploy a police pickup with armed policemen? How do I come to a presiding officer and say I'm sergeant so and so and I demand to vote? Please, people, let's be honest. Yeah. How do I... Yeah, you're the ones who reported... You see, this, this is why, this is why flare, tempers flared. I, my whole issue was how to prevent rigging. I well, deployed to prevent the rigging. Now, uh, this was now such to say that, oh, how do we know? It could be UPC, surely. So this, who is speaking is, the this, truth this, here now? That he could have, he could have... <laughs> You could have listened to the election. You can go out so you no. are stabbing No, hold on, Matembe. Who doesn't I know? I think you are wrong to portray NRM as you just are that. You are thieves. No. I mean, I know. No, 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 please. Okay. My mother, let Robert Kena. Let Robert Kena. Robert Kena, as we move into a break. Let him make his point. Mm? Is Tango Doye The difference Sanchez. you have with the President Museveni should not mess up. Ah, 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 ah. Shut up. Ah, 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 ah. Watch away. You are thieves. Watch out. Okay. Honorable Bakina, you are is Tango Doi a thief yes, as you are and You are a minister there. You. What you heard. I saw you guys telling you. I saw you. I was an insider. I was a leader. All right, right. let's take a short break them. and we'll return yes, shortly. Yes, Good evening. You were. This 
This, this, this is the University of Africa. On the streets, you get your real education. Here, everybody has a degree of something. But the most important qualification is imagination. His reason is to be the GOAT. The reason to imagine is, is to take the beat and make it lit. So no matter what your situation, just use your imagination. has introduced fresh new bouquets on both antenna and dish decoders. Copper bouquet on antenna decoder hey, Copa, Copa. and special on dish. Watch your movies every day Catch the news up all the way Catch the football Catch the music Catch the tunes for the kids every day Nova customers, dial star 185 hash or star 165 hash to upgrade to the new bouquet and enjoy more premium channels at the most affordable subscription. New bouquet, beautifully packaged. Better steady, be better. Seven out of ten of us have lost a substantial amount of money to fraudsters. Money we could have used to pay rent, invest in small businesses, clear fees, or send to mama in the village. Better steady and protect what's yours by being vigilant with your virtual transactions. Keep your pin to yourself and only take calls from registered customer care numbers in case of telecom issues. Better steady. Be better. In partnership with Uganda Communications Commission, Bank of Uganda, MTN Uganda, Equity, Uganda Bankers Association, Post Bank, United Media, Stambik Bank, and MTN Momo. Is your brand attracting the right people or are you lost on the web? Discover how to grow your virtual community and how to influence the influencer by signing up with Nextcom. We do online the way it's meant to be. We crunch the numbers, check the stats and dig in to create promotions, activations, videos and strategies to unlock your brand's potential and increase your online engagements. Maybe all you need is just to disrupt for a week. We got you too. We do the boring stuff so you don't have to. Nextcom, making digital work. Welcome back. It's still the front line as we make sense of uh, the OYAM by-election and a series of other by-elections that have been held in the country. Can we come down? Can we come down? Can we come down? Can we come down? I need a fire extinguisher. But well, more questions still <laughs> linger on this by-election and several other by-elections. And uh, the fundamental question that we'd, we would ask is whether these by-elections epitomize the sad trajectory of Uganda's election politics. Do you agree with the notion that Uganda's politics, elect, elective politics, is hitting a new law, is sinking to a new law? Well, sinking has not started today. I have told you the common denominator 
in our electoral history. And uh, I have some information that people like the uh, Dr. Professor Tango Doi in 1980 in Jinja led a team that chased a candidate by the names of Dr. Milton Obote when he went to talk to them violently. And by that time, he was a UPM youth winger, whatever they were calling themselves. I want him to deny it now that he's here. And I've been accusing him that as early as 1980, you, under the stewardship and command of your M7, little known then, by the way, you started the violence of beating other candidates you do not agree with. Dr. Bote was chased by the t a team led by, among others, Professor Tanga Odoi. Who now heads the Electoral Commission. And who now heads the Violent Electoral Commission of the NRM. Of the NRM. He has said <coughs> that, uh, actually it was uh, my own young brother, Hamson Obua, who said, <coughs> now with what they saw in Oyam, there is no doubt now he agrees as to why Museven went to the bush. Mm. I have made statements here that have not been controverted. With respect to the past violence in all elections where Museven has been, including the one of 1996, by the way, where they were saying, oh, Dr. Semogere was a peaceful man, etc. In my own village in Jalamba, the NRM was mobilized and beat Dr. Semogere with stones. Mm -hmm. In Rukunjiri, mm -hmm. they did the same. And that's what NRM has been thriving on. If you want to know how Museven reacts when he's under, or he feels, whether by apprehension or misapprehension, he perceives threat. You just remember, they used to tell us, oh, at least Jenom uh, Gishamontu is a peaceful man. Was he not tear gassed in this recent election? Even Katumba Oye, John Katumba, was beaten, was not allowed to speak on radio. Now, that is when you will understand the true skin and color of your M7 when it comes to our, challenge. Our Honorable Segona, there is something very interesting. Yes. The president, in a very unusual tone, came out to congratulate the UPC mm. on the victory. Mm. How telling is it? No, no, of course Tango Doy has told you in this very one that they, they were okay because it was not a noop violated, mm. a noop dominated mm. constituency. Because if it is noop which they feel is threatening them, <laughs> they would bring out all the energies they have had. For me, I even congratulate noop because you can't know who won this election. You can't know who got how many votes in this election. Which one? This, uh, this Oyam. Oh, Oyam. Yes. But because that's what it is. It no. Is it's known. You see, yeah, 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 yeah. That is what was allocated. No. Because you do not know <laughs> no. how many Noop would have gotten. No. Noop, got less, Noop got less than the spoiled vote. I thought professors know how to listen. They listen, but they interject. And the interjection as is As long procedure. as the interjection does not cross the red line of interference. I've, now, I've, now, I've now listen, since you have okay, interjected. I'll listen. You see, we do not know how many ballots were stuffed. Okay? The suspicion, from our perspective, is that all the stuffing was done by the NRM because of the historical <laughs> reputation. Indeed, even where NRM is tussling it out with NRM or quasi-NRM, as you saw in Oyam, Mm -mm. Mm. No, they are going below the belt. Mm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> my son, my son wants me to hit UPC above. UPC is UPC. We were, we were competing. We contested against and UPC. We okay. And the noob. Yes, but yes. you see, that's why no, they are no, telling no. you. You speak FPC. about noob if you have to. Speak about DP. Uh, but this was a contest. A, I will this speak was a contest. about UPC because it's a public organization. Then don't misrepresent Which participated. It. I'm not representing. You're misrepresenting. You're the one who said there was ballot staffing. Yes. And you are the winner. Yes. So I'm drawing a nexus <coughs> between the historically violent party 
and the one that won. I think that's a misstatement. You're a historically violent it's party. It's a misstatement. I have st no, no, no. I have said. I think moderator. When, when, when Museven lost no, 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 the election. No, no, no. Uh, let, let me do my role. Tanga, I am perfectly entitled to express myself. But not misspelled. You, you, will, you will respond. That's what civilized men do, by the way. You respond. Mus I've told you, your party is historically violent. When Museven lost an election, he picked guns and killed. When Museven is always under threat, he picks the gun and uses it. That is on record. Number two, you cannot tell how many votes NRM legitimately uh, scored. How about UPC? I'm coming to them because they won. With the allegation. We do not know. With suspicion yes, from Dennis Obua that maybe. Whether, we do not know whether UPC staffed. And I'm coming, I'm explaining. We don't know whether they staffed. But at least they were the first people to raise the alarm that there is ballot staffing. That's number one. Number two, the people who would have staffed for UPC, assuming they were the criminals as they were labeled, had been removed, withdrawn from the field by the police. Number three, it is very strange that NRM with the history of violence in every by-election and even in general election, they are not arrested by the police. Why? Because the police is, is partisan. Go to Bukedea. I'm now drawing corroborative evidence and circumstances. In Bukedea, there were two dominant candidates, both of whom were NRM. NRM. And the complaint is one, one group attacked the other's home, stole his money, took away his academic documents, caused the violence in the entire election, <coughs> which Museven, the chairman of NRM, has since described as no election. It, uh, no, he said it looks like a film. It was a film to him. I don't know when, when he last attended a film, but those films of theirs of, 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 the, of, of the 80s would still ring a bell. And he says this sounds like a film, says there, there was no election, and has since ordered the arrest of a number of people, RDC, DPC, ETC. Now you can see even in Oyam, they have arrested the same group. The reason behind this is that there is internal politics of NRM. You go to Oyam, the chairman of the Electoral Commission says the secretariat, which by the way, 